All right, hello everybody. Welcome to a, a, a live stream, a Comic Tropes live stream. Um, just gonna make sure that everything seems to be going well. Looks like I've got good stream quality. Looks like the, uh, that's, that's not quite in focus though. Let me um, just adjust this settings on the drawings real quick because it doesn't look like it's quite in focus to me. Um, hmm. Maybe I'm just a little too zoomed in, so I'm going to make a few adjustments here, and uh, we'll go from there. Is that? I'm trying to make some adjustments on everything. Is that okay, or is that too bright? I think that that's okay. I think that that's a good setting, and hopefully my audio is coming through okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. These are just sort of fuzzy, because it's just uh, pretty light sketching. Hello! Oh, wow! Got a bunch of folks jumping in. Let's see. I'll try to greet everybody. Hello, Noah. What is this? Brendan. Mandela Butterfly. Compared. James Gleason. Uh, Scott Sampson. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining. That's so nice of you. So, um, I am in the process of moving. I've, I've mentioned this here and there on things like social media, but not everybody knows. But um, I'm in the process of moving. Uh, my fiancé and I bought a house, and um, we've been moving. And it's down to the time where I'm, I'm about to move, like, everything in this studio pretty soon. Um, and it'll take a little while to get set up for, for live streaming. I, I don't think I need to take a break on Comic Tropes itself, but I'm in the process of a move. And I was like, okay, this is basically my last opportunity to do a live stream for a while. And it happens to basically be my birthday, so I just figured that sounds like fun. You know, I, I, I thought it would be fun to talk to all of you, uh, work on sketching. I've, um, I don't know how well this is showing up, but I've been sort of like... Uh, that's. I think that the, I think I I didn't do the uh, focus very well. Let me um. Let me see what I can do there. Uh, I'm gonna adjust that. Thank you for all the uh, nice happy birthday wishes. 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 Yeah. Wishes. That's very very kind of you. Um. I think that's a little better. Yeah. That that should let let us see this stuff uh, a little better. So. Um. I've sort of found the lines that I'm going to use for this and uh, we'll just uh, we'll just take it from there um, no background here but that's because what I decided to do when I decided to do this fight scene was I'm working on keeping the perspective the same in every shot so what I can do is actually um, and maybe this is a small cheat but I think it's using the tools available to me I'll, I'll later illustrate a full background here digitally. I think I'll use Photoshop to uh, to, do, to draw that digitally and, and, and sort of erase these guys. I'll do a full background and then I can just size it to these because uh, I'm using the same birthday. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's a sketch for an action scene. Exactly right. And um, uh, I didn't really learn art anywhere in particular, Gargamon. I have taken some classes here and there, like as a little kid, not little kid, like 13 or something, I took a cartooning class that also involved life drawing. I mean, I took AN art elective when I was in college, and I do do, um, every once in a while, like uh, life drawing, live drawing stuff, like where you go out and you get to see, you know, a model I especially like to use, uh, utilize. Dr. Sketchies, they have those in most cities, and, uh, you know, you just pay, like, sort of a cover charge, it gets you some drinks, and it gets you a seat where um, a burlesque model will sort of do um, timed poses from, like, really short sketches, like, only, like, a minute long, out to five minutes, ten minutes, uh, and, and so on, uh, longer and longer, um, and there's little contests, and they play fun music, and you get to have drinks, it's, it's a blast, it's really, really fun. But that's about all I've done. <laughs> Hello, Janice. Hello, Jake Oldman. Hey, J. Andrew World. Uh, look at all these folks. Evilist Badger. That's really kind of you. Uh, uh, lots of uh, lots of nice wishes. Appreciate it. So, um, 
Now I need to find where I put my actual uh, inking tools, because last time I did a stream, we were more focused on um, doing all sorts of colors and stuff. But I've got some tools here somewhere, and uh, yeah, I think I'm going to just sort of focus on this uh, big frame first. And if I can do that, then I can sort of work on the smaller guys uh, with a little less detail. Uh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. So if anybody has questions, definitely feel free to uh, ask, and I'll do my best to um, uh, address everyone that I can. And uh, that's part of the fun of doing this, is uh, us all getting to interact and uh, talk comics and pop culture and art technique, all that good stuff. Um, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to make the fighters anyone specific, but, um, oh, hold on, uh, I just got a, a super chat for a hundred, and I don't know what money denomination NOK is. I'm gonna have to look that up unless somebody wants to, uh, tell me, but Mordegon, that's very kind no matter what amount it is, like, I'm super grateful. Thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. As you get older, you don't really do as much for your birthday, in my opinion. You know, I'm not, like, having a party or anything. I'm going to do some fun stuff because I happen to have the day off tomorrow. That's nice. I didn't ask for it off, but I got tomorrow off. So I'm going to do some fun stuff with my fiancé, um, see some family, read some comics, kind of take it easy tomorrow. Um, Norwegian Kroner, thank you. Norwegian. Well, I would really love to visit some of the Scandinavian countries. My grandmother was from Sweden, and I would really, really... I love traveling worldwide. I would really love to, to get up there and see Norway and Sweden and Denmark. That would really be lovely sometime. So, thank you very much for educating me, everybody. I like that uh, Jay Andrew World's first guess was uh, North Korea. It is, uh, is not money from North Korea. That would probably get me on some sort of a list. <laughs> Thank you for the, thank you, uh, let's see, Dibijos, Dib Dibijos, I, I, that, that, that means comics or something, doesn't it? I, I don't know exactly how to pronounce your name, but thank you for the compliment on the shirt. It, um, it's just a bunch of bananas, and it really reminded me of the sort of goofy shirts that, uh, director Taika Waititi likes to wear, so I, um, when I saw that, I was just like, oh yeah, that's, that's for me. Um, well, I'm already, uh, hard at work on the next Comic Tropes episode. It's gonna be actually about a, uh, manga that I learned about in one of my very first live streams that I ever did with you. There was a, a viewer, I believe her name was Karen, from Mexico, and she mentioned it several times as something she thought I would enjoy. And eventually, I saw it on the shelf, and I was like, let's give it a try. And, uh, so anyway, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Kim Jong-un loves my channel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it means drawings in Spanish. Thank you. Thank you for, 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 uh, explaining that. I did have to take Spanish as, um, a language in college, uh, three semesters worth. And some of the vocabulary has stuck with me, but not really all of the, um, I have a really hard time with the, uh, like, sentence structure, like figuring out conjugation for verbs and stuff like that. Um, sometimes, though, when I hear other people talking, as long as it's slow enough, I can pick some of it up. It's hard. Um, an episode about Jeff Johns? That's probably a pretty good idea. I really should. Do you think motion blur or speed lines bring more life to a fight scene? I think they can as long as it's executed well. I absolutely think it can. I've been rereading Akira by Katsuhiro Otomo, and his speed lines, I honestly think, are some of the best in the business. You'd think, hey, speed lines are speed lines? No, some people can definitely utilize them and execute them better than others. It looks awesome. It looks so... His artwork, I had, I had really forgotten how good the manga illustrations are because you know i mostly think of uh the 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 anime when i think of akira which is excellent some of the smoothest most beautiful animation but the uh comic book version is so detailed 
Uh, I don't watch telenovelas regularly, but when I was taking uh, Spanish in uh, college, uh, they, they did show some of them for us to try to uh, pick up, uh, you know, regular conversation in a, in a somewhat entertaining way. So uh, I've seen a, a, a little bit of them. Anyway. Um, I like Gary Frank's art okay. I wouldn't call myself like a mega fan of him, but I, um, I appreciate that he's consistent. He's a clear storyteller. Um, I think that with the right anchor, his work does look quite good. I've, I've enjoyed his work on things like uh, Hulk and Superman. Yeah, he, he can be very good. Let's see. In Mexican Spider-Man Stories episode, it showed you had Spanish lessons. Yeah, so with practice, I can speak, but um, yeah, I, I would not call myself anywhere close to fluent, unfortunately. Uh, Dwayne McDuffie is another great idea. Great idea. I never knew Zorro had a telenovela. That, that's awesome. Zorro is a uh, very cool uh, pulp character that like uh, certainly influenced a lot of early comic book stuff. You know, there's a lot of Zorro in uh, Batman. I wish there were more artists that did uh, their artwork, uh, or at least some artwork, on stuff like Twitch or streaming on YouTube, stuff like that, because, uh, boy, you can really learn a lot. Like, I happen to be a big fan of... Um, South Korean illustrator uh, Kim Jong-Hee and he mostly does uh, sort of like commissions or um, uh, teaches classes and stuff like that he does a very small amount of comic books mostly it would be more like a, a, a cover or poster or something like that he does not do a lot of sequential artwork I wish he did but um, he's one of, he does record a lot of his stuff and you can learn a lot from how he um, does that. Oh, people are pointing out Jim Lee. Jim Lee does stream, yeah. I'm definitely going to talk about uh, Jeff Smith's Bone Wheeze Man, and I hope to do it uh, this year. That's my plan. That's my plan. Mm. I'm doing well, Cleveland. Thanks. Hello, Jalopy Joe and Atomicus Video Studios. I'm glad a bunch of people out there know who Kim Jong-E is, because he really is, as far as like a living illustrator he might really be the best um obviously that that's up to you know the individual's opinion and stuff but he's insanely talented he really is hello joe and insanity um yeah what are some of your favorite fight scenes that's kind of a tough question to ask i mean i've been reading comics for so long that it really uh is hard i mean i'll uh, mostly at uh, my mind comes to stuff that I've been reading currently so you know I'm thinking of like Akira or um, stuff like that I as far as a really memorable fight scene that is a that is a good question I also go back to, to you know some classics like Watchmen uh, I think you know like the comedian getting killed at the beginning is a pretty amazing fight scene I think that like a well-constructed fight scene is uh, uh, Frank Miller in um, Dark Knight Returns you know uh, Batman and Green Arrow versus Superman. Those those are some pretty good ones. Um, yeah, it, but it um, did I see the boys? I've seen almost all of it. I haven't finished it yet. I've been very busy, unfortunately, so I haven't been able to um, finish it. But personally, I really like the show. I think it is a. I think it is an improvement on the uh, comics. I wasn't a humongous fan of the comics. They were okay, but I kind of bailed somewhere around issue 20. I just, it wasn't really hooking me that much. Um, but a lot of people have been a asking me to do a video on the boys. I think it's because the show is so interesting. And um, there's a part of me that wants to do a comparison of like what they sort of changed to, in my opinion, improve the source material. 
It would be very spoilery, though, so I have to really think about that. Like, you know, I don't know, I don't know how much that would get somebody into reading it if I reviewed with a, an eye towards such spoilers. Um, but we'll see. You guys are hitting me with lots of questions. If I've um, missed something, it's purely because it's going kind of fast, and I'm also trying to draw. Got a super chat. I'll always pause to say that to see that Marco. First of all, thank you very much. That's really, really kind of you. Very, very kind. I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, so thank you. Uh, happy birthday, Chris. Here's to another year full of comic tropes content. Absolutely. I, I have. Uh, I have so many ideas for episodes, I mean, and you guys are kicking them out too, so trust me, I, uh, I, I have more than a year's worth of uh, ideas in me, <laughs> w way more. Um, somebody asked about Doomsday Clock, I have mentioned this on a previous um, episode, so I intentionally am not reading Doomsday Clock as it comes out, I basically didn't want to support it financially um, while it's new, you know, like add to the circulation. Um, the creator, Alan Moore, never intended for it to be a property that DC owned. Uh, you know, obviously some of that's his fault, but the contract he signed, he believed that he was going to be getting the rights to the material back after DC published it for a year, but there was a clause in it that says that if D as long as DC is publishing that Watchmen series that he did as a trade paperback, uh, or any form really, as long as they're publishing it, they maintain the rights to it. So they just keep it in publication every year. It's just in there, that's why you, it's never hard to find Watchmen. So, um, you know, uh, make of that what you will. Like, I, 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 I certainly don't judge anyone for deciding to buy it or anything like that, but I didn't want to support it while it was new. So, once it's finished, maybe then I could pick up used copies at a comic book store, help out that comic book store. They've already ordered it at that point, and then I could review the whole thing. Oh my, I can't keep it up. Um, hold on. Uh, I gotta, I gotta thank people properly here. Um, Gustavo, thank you. I'll blaze it. <laughs> Dean, thank you. I really got into Giffen's Justice League after your episode on that. Loving it, and happy birthday. Well, thank you, Dean. Thank you. Um, it's pretty funny, and yet it like also has some good character growth. I, I like that um, their run tried to focus on some sort of lesser-used underdog-type characters in DC, and they, um, they definitely added a lot to, uh, to many of them. Uh, kind of the definitive takes on um, some of the characters like Guy Gardner and uh, Blue Beetle and uh, Booster Gold, Fire and Ice. Um, yeah, a lot to like there. Could we have an episode on Dan Jurgens? That's an interesting idea. Dan Jurgens is definitely um, a big name that, that I hadn't really considered, but, but yeah. I should be drawing Batman blowing out a birthday cake? All right, I'll try to do it really fast, okay? We'll pause to, um, to do this. Uh, and, and, and keep in mind, this is going to be very sketchy, okay? I'm looking at myself in the in the camera. <sighs> okay. All right. Don't get used to this, guys. I I I rarely have time to pause and like do what you say but I figured this is a that was a, that that idea amused me so uh, I'm doing my best here got a song in my head but whenever I'm live streaming I have to remember that I uh, can't really sing it because then they'll uh, demonetize me Can you believe it <laughs> All 
All right, let's see here. We're we going to have Batman just sort of blowing out these candles really powerfully because he's a superhero and superheroes do everything uh, stronger than the rest of us mere mortals. Whatever he's doing here, you know that Alfred made it. He used up all of his time and effort, and uh, Batman just ruined it with his uh, super mighty, uh, still mortal, but, but more than you and I, lungs. Trying to do this uh, as fast as I can so that I can sort of get back to what I was doing, but... Um, yeah, here's my, uh... Here's my birthday Batman. You guys tell me if I can, uh... Draw or not. People are always saying that I should draw, like, without, uh... Any preliminary sketches and stuff when I do this show, and, uh... It's a fair request. I don't always have time, but... It was a funny idea, so I'll uh, do my best here. Let's see. What are people saying? Uh, a montage of Alfred using the facilities of <laughs> Wayne Manor cooking up a storm. What's your opinion of Matt Fraction? I like Matt Fraction. Um, you know what? I haven't read enough Matt Fraction. I've met him a couple times um, at like signings and stuff because I do like some of his books. I really liked what he did on Iron Fist and with um, Hawkeye. Those were two that just connected with me a lot. Um, people are saying that uh, Sex Criminals is very good. I haven't read that one yet. Uh, so I should. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I like Matt Fraction. Alright, so this is basically my version of uh, Batman blowing out the candles on a cake. He's, he's just blowing them everywhere. <laughs> Pretty silly, right? What character do you think has the most amount of plot armor other than Batman? Yeah, somebody who like basically can't be beaten? Hmm maybe Captain America, but at the same time, I always still think of him as an underdog because he doesn't have the same superpowers that uh, most other characters have. The evolution of paper used in comics. That's an interesting question, Dean. Um, yeah, the, uh, the, 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 I, I, I almost want to go beyond that and talk about how, you know, we've moved into uh, digital being so uh, e easy to utilize because it's easier to correct mistakes, but of course that also eliminates an artist's uh, uh, secondary market of income because, you know, they've always been able to uh, sell their original, not always, but for a long time, they've been able to sell their original art. Um, and then of course paper itself, as well as printing techniques, have evolved such that uh, yeah like it's a, it's quite a different uh, environment than um, 40 50 years ago interesting question I'll give it some thought I'm gonna move this up a little just so that you can see a little better what I'm doing and then um, Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Happy birthday. Thank you, Jeff. 
you think you would ever do an episode talking about the Scott Pilgrim series? Yeah, I absolutely would. I like Scott Pilgrim, or really, it's uh, fair to say that I like uh, its, cre its creator a lot. Deadpool has a lot of plot armor. So does Lobo. Or at least he did before the New 52 and everything. He literally couldn't die. Um, Thanos has a fair amount at this point. So, yeah, there's, there's a few characters who uh, arguably overpowered. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Um, is it Shang-Chi? I was sort of thinking of making, not this guy Shang-Chi, but I was thinking of like making these guys in the suits be um, Matt Murdock and uh, Iron Fist. Oh, hold on, got to pause here. Thank you, Bert Marsh Wiggle Studio. That's really, really kind of you. And thank you, Running Joke. Um, who says, it's your birthday and my anniversary. Wow, that's a good anniversary. <laughs> Dark Side, Superboy Prime. There's plenty of superheroes that basically have just sort of been built up a little too much. And uh, maybe they just need to, to get a breather. Um, but that's hard when something's popular, you know. I, people want to see it. So, yeah. Tough question. But good one. I hadn't really heard that term, plot armor, but I could figure out what it meant. Just from context. Yeah, Lobo took a dive against Wolverine is exactly right. So at, at one point there was a, a um, Marvel DC crossover comic. Um, I talk about it in my Venom episode because uh, Venom takes out both Spider-Man and Superman in it. Uh, but there was also like um, a part where you could vote on who would win between certain matchups. And uh, the one between Lobo and Wolverine. You know, first of all, probably Lobo should win. Probably. But beyond that, just say, like, the votes came in Wolverine. Now it's up to the writer to give us a good story there. Give us something cool. Well, they did it in, like, half a page. Wolverine and Lobo f tumble over a bar where we can't see them. And you hear some sound effects, and then Wolverine comes up and, like, lights a cigar or something. He was like, oh, that was a tough fight, but I beat him. And it's like, we didn't even get to see anything after voting on this, after they hyped it up. That stunk. That stunk. Um, yes, I have heard of Bart Kira. I've seen uh, clips of it. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Thank you for all the blesses. Sorry I sneezed on camera. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. I would personally say that, like, if I have a weakness, and I, of course, have several, the biggest weakness is um, trying to illustrate hands in a convincing way. Um, definitely always a challenge for me. Something I practice on a lot, but I, I just don't feel like they're quite where I want them to be in my imagination and all. I think we all have like areas that we want to focus on. I mean, no matter where you are as an artist and, uh, you know, it just, um, there's always going to be an area, but right now the, the big one that bothers me is, uh, just how I approach, uh, hands and, um, I've been focusing on trying to do it like, uh, just, just focusing on breaking it into shapes, but it's, uh, what can I say? We all have our challenges, and my big one is hands, and I want to get better at hands because I think that after the face, they're the most expressive thing an artist can do uh, for their characters, so it's really important to me that at some point, you know, I, I get to the point where I, I'm comfortable with, with how I approach hands. 
better than I was, that's for sure, but uh, still could use a lot of uh, a lot of work. Who's somebody that you think does hands well? Because that's something I actually notice in good artists. For instance, I think that um, there's an artist, Dave Johnson, I think is great, Eric Kinnett. Um, they're, they're very technically oriented people. Um, but I also think that like a lot of sort of artists that draw in a more classic style, like, you know, a John Romita, even John Romita Jr. or Mike Zeck, like draw really, really good effective hands. Someone asked how I am. Um, how do I like Howard Porter? I, I have to admit that he's never really been one of my favorites. Um, I, I remember reading him during Grant Morrison's uh, Justice League run. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I didn't love it. But, um, you know, it, it, it's not an artist that bothers me. I just, uh, yeah, if I'm being honest, like not one of my favorites. I'm trying to think of what it is. Some of it might just be that I feel like a lot of his faces look the same, but honestly, that's a problem for every comic book artist, because a lot of drawing comics is sort of um, working in shortcuts for illustrating. And so, you know, you, you come up with shortcuts for how uh, certain poses, how you draw hands, and how you draw faces, and the, the, the issue is that it can, um, they can all sort of look the same. Um, I think it's a big challenge for, for everyone in comics. Todd McFarlane has an interesting approach with hands. He has really interesting weird hands, yeah. Jack Kirby. Sherry and Larry Welts. I have to admit, I don't know those creators. I'm sorry, no, no, no. What is happening in that scene? Well, let me back out again. Maybe I'm in too close now. Um, but, like, I'm, I'm having somebody uh, sweep uh, under this guy and uh, take his legs out from under him. And I think it, like, makes more sense within context, you know, if you're looking at uh, this guy turning around, like, dropping. This is where I'll have to have the most motion. That'll be a really tricky panel. And then, like, hitting him right in the knee, which sweeps this guy up. He's going to land on his side. Hopefully that makes sense. Glenn Fabry's hands. I'll definitely do an Eric Larson episode at some point. I want to do a good job. He's somebody that I just... I really like him as both a person and a creator, so I want to do a good job on that. Did you ever find a comic book-inspired video game that you loved? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, back on the N64, they had a really good Turok game. That was pretty cool. Um, oh, well, maybe I've seen Cherry's work. No, no, no. And and just have sort of forgotten the name, because I am bad at names. So it's possible I do. I am familiar. I'll, I'll, on the subject of a fight scene, thoughts on Mortal Kombat? Um, Mortal Kombat's fun. I used to love that game back in the day, that's for sure. Um, I haven't played any of their games in, in, a, in a while. Um, yeah, now that I think of it, I kind of miss... Uh, Mortal Kombat. That was that was definitely fun. I remember uh, I basically was playing like the first four, and then I sort of law um, fell out of uh, playing them. Let's see. Mortal Kombat is getting another movie? That could be fun. What's a movie that would have been a better comic? 
You know, the things I think about, like, have actually been adapted into comics, and then they weren't that great for the most part. Like, I would have thought that thing, like, a lot of the action movies that I saw in the 80s and, and even into the 90s would have made um, awesome comics, but I think you need top-level creator behind them. You know, I think that RoboCop would have lent itself to a lot more cool stories in comic book form, and uh, I don't feel like I ever saw anything great there. Um, that's just an example. Did you study fighting styles and techniques in order to be able to draw fight scenes? Uh, yes or no. Yes and no is what I meant to say. Um, I, uh, I have studied uh, some martial arts. Um, but real fighting is really, really fast. And like comic book and movie fighting is sort of a different type of thing, if that makes sense. Um, I took... Krav Maga for three years and I really did like it um, eventually I sort of stopped because it was sort of wearing on my body more than I wanted it to because I was primarily taking it for exercise but while I took that like um, they offered other classes in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Aikido primarily and a little bit of Muay Thai kickboxing and I would take those classes as well so I enjoyed um, taking all that. I just, um, yeah, I haven't studied for a while though at this point. So, um, but it still does give you a few ideas for how to approach a fight. It teaches you a few things in terms of. It doesn't teach you how to move a camera into a good placement, but it does teach you like when you're drawing someone, like where where to like have their sort of joints locked and what to sort of have loose for at least a fighting style eh. teaches you a little bit by the way i'm only drinking water i have given up mountain dew uh you've seen me in, in or on this show and stuff drinking mountain dew i quit that over a week ago no more caffeine or empty calories for me it's really hot though so i'm drinking plenty of water right now but I'm really proud of myself for uh, getting off of it. It was a uh, miserable f several days uh, while I dealt with the, uh, what do you call it, the um, caffeine withdrawal. I'm sure any of you who have uh, quit it before know what I'm talking about. It's quite miserable. The guy you're drawing is dr doing a drop kick. No, no, this guy is falling over. See, in this panel he's getting kicked He's getting his legs swept like right there, and it's hitting him so hard that he's whoop, going ass over tea kettle. <laughs> no more do. No more do for me. Will I review the Mortal Kombat comics? Um, I saw a Mortal Kombat comic, and I took a picture recently. Let me show you. It's pretty funny. Um... Oh man, this cracked me up. I was in a store and I saw it and I had to just take a picture. Okay, here we go. Can I... Oh, the lolly. Okay, I have to do it at an angle. Goro, Prince of Pain. And then there's this weird Baraka that just looks like a blob of lines. He's, he's a real mess. His art style cracked me up. Like, what is that? That's so. That's such a generic face. It's too tiny on this huge body. It doesn't look like a monster. Anyway, it cracked me up. Uh, any experience with animation? Uh, limited, but I've used um, a few things. Uh, let's see. Uh, in, back in the day, Flash, and I've also used... Um, oh, I can't remember all the programs now because it's been a little while, but about a year ago, I um, did a small animation for... Um, a G.I. Joe episode, so um, that was fun. I, I, I animated a, a, a fake commercial. Congratulations on quitting Coke, Gargamon. Um, when when did I start drawing? As long as I, I, I can remember I've been drawing, I can't remember a time when I wasn't drawing. I really didn't take it too seriously, though, until I was in my um, early 20s. I, um, yeah, I just, uh, I wish I took it seriously earlier, because I think I, it could have made me a better artist, 
Um, I, I would just sort of draw for fun every once in a while. And, uh, but it wasn't until my 20s. And even then, like, I um, picked up some bad habits that I had to unlearn. So, um, yeah. Wish I... Uh, Wish I'd started earlier is all I can say, but you know what? It's never too late to learn. It's just that you can um, become a better artist the, the, the sooner you take it seriously. That's all. Uh, I've got all these lines here that I used to like sort of find the form, but then I drew over the lines that I really wanted to draw, and it's uh, kind of confusing as to which one I want to choose right now. It's also really hot in here. Oh, you can even see. I'm sorry. I'm like sort of sweating here. I've got air conditioning on, but it is brutally, brutally hot. What are some bad habits? Well, initially, my bad habits were just trying to draw like other artists that I liked. And that's not necessarily how you will draw. So I was trying to draw like, you know, uh, Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee in the ni early 90s. And... Um, all I was doing was emulating their their stylistic quirks, which didn't help me with the underlying foundation of my art. I think it slowly made me a little worse. And then when I started like focusing more on going to like live drawing sessions and stuff, I think I started relying too much on reference, and I think that's still my issue um, that it that it's too stiff. So those are some of the habits that I'm constantly um, trying to uh, work against, if that makes sense. I don't know how much uh, oh how much longer I can do this honestly I um, it's really hot and it's so hot that I feel like I'm about to smudge some of the line work and, and this paper is really good at not letting you um, smudge but it's uh, it's pretty warm in here it's pretty warm I feel like I'm doing like a hot sauna Relying on reference isn't necessarily that bad. There are plenty of artists that can execute it pretty well, but um, doing it too much, I think, makes your artwork stiff. And um, beyond just sort of being stiff, you're sort of locked into like the reference poses you're finding if you're not taking them yourself. And then that can lead to poor storytelling for comics. It can make for a great illustration, but poor comics. Because you need that flow panel to panel that it's easy to sort of follow the way the camera does. Um, so anyway. If they're doing Crisis, it's probably an alt-universe trickster. I don't know what that is referring to. Sorry. Mr. Tropes, nice to see you back. But I do see the mention of Crisis, and I'm pretty excited for uh, this coming year's uh, crossover in the Arrowverse uh, TV shows. Um, they're in, they've got all five of their regular shows uh, crossing over. So they've got like five episodes to do this through. Like what's that? Like a Flash Arrow, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, and I guess maybe... Batwoman? I know there's five episodes, so I forget. I think it's Batwoman is the, the other one. But they're going to add... Um, uh, Black Lightning's going to be in there. They're going to take guys like um, Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman from the animated series. He's going to play an old man Batman. What what have they got? they got Burt Ward to come back as Robin. They've got Linda Carter as Wonder Woman. Who else do they have? Um, I, I won't be surprised... If they, uh, you know, you use um, John Wesley Ship as another Flash again, um, so cool. How many Tom Welling is coming back? I hadn't heard that. Is he definitely? Um, they've got Brandon Routh playing Superman again, as well as uh, 
the Atom on, on Legends of Tomorrow. He, he's going to come back as Superman. They're going to have Superman and Lois Lane from the Supergirl show up here. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, Linda Carter, I believe, is going to be Wonder Woman again or something. So they've got all of these... Uh, all of these cool characters um but beyond cool characters what i like about it is um i like how they're playing with their legacy you know dc has a better legacy of live action tv show stuff and it seems like and and movies and they're bringing as much of that into play as possible even if it's just a cameo i'm kind of happy that it sort of acknowledges that all of this stuff takes place in a multiverse and i don't know if they'll be able to but it would be nice if they could get somebody from like sort of like the current uh, dc film universe um so i think that uh that could be really really fun no this guy's falling down see i'm having him get kicked here and then this guy's following through it's it's, it's there's four people in this scene. These two guys are bad guys. There's a small bad guy here that you can start to see a little bit more as it comes out. So this guy's running up. There's these two guys, and he looks like he's going to fight this guy. But instead, this guy starts dropping, spinning around to deliver a kick to the knee. Spins through, and this guy's upended. Meanwhile, this guy simply comes up to this guy, does a quick snap kick to his... Uh, back of his head they should make a comic where Superman was raised by an abusive family and his powers don't emerge until adolescence when he is really damaged and dangerous as hell uh, yeah except that they played with some of those ideas in Red Sun and then on top of that you've got that recent movie I'm trying to remember what it was called uh, Brightburn and he wasn't raised by an abusive family but like he definitely is an evil young Superman. You should do a contest where a new artist creates the next panel. Sort of like, um, what's it called? Uh, it's like that game of telephone where, where you sort of hand it off. Oh, Exquisite Corpse is the name of the, the, the thing. You'll draw a panel, then you hand it off to somebody else and they draw a panel. There's no plan. You just see where the story goes. I used to do that with some of my friends in D.C., let me pause here. Uh, William, thank you very much for that uh, super chat. That's so nice of you. Early birthday present for me. Tomorrow's technically my birthday, but, like, we're pretty late at night. We're, we're, we're almost at my birthday. Uh, I'm counting it as my birthday right now. Uh, he says, my man Nimrod getting some love in Powers of X. Needless to say, me and one other guy are excited. Yeah, this new version of Nimrod in Powers of X is interesting because he's, um, he's, he's more emotional. Um, the artists for House of X and Powers of X, I really like who they chose. I find that their styles are both very reminiscent of Stuart Immonen, and I, that was an artist I really liked. I'll do an episode on him sometime. I really wish he hadn't retired, because he is a great artist. But anyway, um, House of X and Powers of X, I'm totally digging on it. The cast of that awful Justice League pilot, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we need that one. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that unacknowledged. But, um, no, oh, they've got some really, uh, really great stuff, and, uh, I, I hope it's good. You know, I usually like their crossovers. I think that they do a little bit more, uh, comic booky, uh, over the top type stuff on those, uh, Arrowverse crossovers. I, I, I tend to like them a lot. You, you get reminded sometimes, like, okay, it's a TV budget. They're, they're doing as much as they can, and some of it's impressive, but, you know, it's not the movies. And that's okay, though. It just means you get to know the characters a little better, builds up to something, and, uh... Oh, I... I... I like TV in general. I don't have TV right now, though, ironically. I haven't for a little while. I just uh, can't really afford a cable bill. So I've only got, like, YouTube, Netflix, and Amazon Prime. And um, as much as I do enjoy um, a lot of what Netflix has, I can really only afford one streaming service at a time. Oh, I missed the Super Chat, didn't I? So when Disney comes out with their Super Chat, I'm probably going to get that. 
Masato K, thank you so much. Super, super kind of you. All right. That's awesome. Which crossover is my favorite? Oh, that's an interesting one. Um, I liked... Uh, what was it? I think it was... The, the, the Earth X one. Was that, that... That wasn't the last one, was it? I don't think it was. I don't... Earth X was the one, basically, that had, like, the universe where the Nazis had won, so the su a lot of the superheroes were, like, super evil. I like that one. That was a really cool one. <sighs> I almost did a Max episode very recently, folks, um, but there is a lot to talk about there, and it, um, it just was too much for me to do within the time that I had for that particular week. Uh, just know that, like, the Max and, and specifically the work of, um, its creator is something I plan on, uh, on addressing at some point soon, but, um, not, not yet. Haven't, haven't been able to basically find the time yet. Um, but I will. Yeah, Batman Green Hornet. That's pretty cool. They used to not even really care about who owned stuff. Like, in the original Superman movie, and, well, not the serials, but, like, the actual, like, movie in, um, 1977? Uh, the one with Christopher Reeve. Um, apparently, and I, I don't know if this is an urban legend or if it's true, but I've heard that what the filmmakers wanted to do was have him bump into Spider-Man on top of a building... And then at the last minute, they sort of realized that, like, that involved a whole nother set of rights. And so um, they they came up with that quick scene where Superman confronts a uh, burglar climbing up uh, a building with suction cups. That's what I've heard. No, Chrissy, the Max uh, with two X's. Uh, the Max is a weird comic that takes place mostly in a sort of traumatized woman's head sort of dream world but characters there start crossing into the real world it's it's really confusing yeah do you think there will be time travel in the new star wars movie no i don't think that that's something they they'd do i don't think it'll work i really don't think that they'd involve that uh that's a sci-fi idea and for the most part uh star wars has certain sci-fi set dressing, but at its core, it's more fantasy. I, 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 I've, and I think that uh, time travel um, is a tougher beast to utilize in um, in fantasy. So I've switched over to using just a um, technical pen for these panels where the characters are much smaller. Um, my thinking is it's more about sort of the, uh, out, uh, the just big shapes and, and um, the flow of the motion and stuff. So I don't want to like sort of um, cover it up with lots of extraneous detail or even shading. Uh, that's my thinking. I don't know if it's correct, but that's my that's my thinking. <sighs> Thank you for the happy birthday, Defined. The turtle should meet the Max. That could be an interesting story. The Max is all about projection. She projects his hero persona onto him. He's really just a bum in a lampshade. Yeah, it, that's that's fair. That's totally accurate. I'm not familiar with RWBY. I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it is. They did time travel in Star Wars Rebels? How? That doesn't seem like it would fit. Do you have any advice for younger artists? Yeah, I think I do. I think that, like, um, depending on how young you are, uh, just drawing for fun, first of all, just have fun with it. 
You know, you're, you're your first audience. Um, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're going to give it up. So if anything sort of impedes that, that level of some fun, it, it can be work, but be sure you're having some fun with it. If, if, if you start losing that, see why you're losing that. Avoid that influence. Second, I would just say, like, you know, really focus on um, trying to recognize the basic shapes and the camera angles that, 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 uh, that and the, just the structure of what artists you like do. Don't focus as much on the details, like exactly how they draw. And then start focusing on taking some life drawing classes, because drawing from life will teach you how to draw anything you want to draw. And then you'll be able to do it however you want. But um, yeah, the only way you can become good is by drawing a lot, like practicing. And you can only, you're only going to be willing to practice if, you know, you enjoy it. Um, the work can come later. There's probably lots more that I could say, but... At least have fun with it. Thanks, Charles. Appreciate these birthday wishes. Really do. John Carpenter's going to write a Joker story? Didn't hear that. If, if it's truly horrific, that's kind of a cool idea. John Carpenter hasn't really made movies in a while because his last, like, at least two weren't very good. Like, Ghosts of Mars was pretty bad. What, what came before that? Like, Vampires? I guess Vampires was a little fun, but, uh, man, in the 80s, he could not be beaten. Wasn't always appreciated for what he did, but, uh, he is now, I think. I mean, people look at stuff like, uh, The Thing and, uh, I don't know. It's great. Did he do, um, In the Mouth of Madness with Sam Neill? Because that actually wasn't bad. I don't remember. Oh, he did do um, In the Mouth of Madness? Because that actually wasn't too bad. That, that wasn't bad. Yeah, they live... Look, Mandela Butterfly just lists it. Christine? Decent. Big Trouble in Little China? Very, very fun. Prince of Darkness? Very interesting. They Live? Great. Mouth of Madness? Not bad. But in the middle, you've got, like, uh, The Thing. And that was really amazing. Um, and, I mean, Halloween, the first Halloween... That holds up great. Halloween is, is great. And then um, Assault on Precinct 13, that's a totally solid uh, thriller. That is a great thriller. What superhero movie do you think should have more horror elements implemented into it? Blade, potentially Doctor Strange, um, you know, like, uh, if basically supernatural things. Swamp Thing. From what I heard, that, like, Swamp Thing TV show was... A lot of people said it was really good and uh, pretty horrific. So, oh, The Fog, Escape from New York? Damn, like, yeah, John Carpenter made a lot of movies. Um, have I ever considered making my own comic before? I've, I've done some comics. It's all self-published stuff. Yeah. Um, Connor says the new Doctor Strange is going horror. I know they announced that. Um, I, I, I hope they do. I have a hard time imagining it, you know, being an R-rated movie. It's still going to be PG-13, so I sort of question how horrific it's going to get, but you never know. You never know. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd see Kurt Russell as uh, Snake Plissken again. That guy's awesome. I don't know if anybody uh, went to see um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but uh, Kurt Russell has a bit of a role in that. He's great. Oh, Kurt Russell is a treasure. Like, I can't think of a, a time I've seen, like, Kurt Russell in a movie and, like, been disappointed with what he did. Um, you know, I can think of a movie like, uh, I don't know, Overboard or something that, like, hasn't aged that well. Um, but Or I can think of, like, you know, unfortunately, uh, that uh, Escape from L.A. was not very good. Used some pretty bad special effects. But Kurt Russell himself was always great. Like, he, he's awesome. He's awesome in whatever he does. He's definitely, like, a favorite of mine, like, in terms of, like, an actor. Just, uh, and remember, he's, uh, he's a Disney guy. He, uh, he was, um, a child actor in, in Disney movies growing up. He did a, he did a ton of movies for Disney, um, when he was just, uh, a kid. Oh, and now I guess he came back because he was, uh, Star-Lord's dad, uh, Ego. So, yeah. Captain Ron. Yeah, Captain, well... Kevin Ron is, like, only an okay comedy in a way, but I do think that both Martin Short and Kurt Russell are pretty funny in it. There's that scene, like, late in the movie where he just switches the eye patch, and for some reason that really cracks me up. It's just so casual, and you're like, oh, that was always fake. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen that, but that's awesome. What else are people saying? They should do a Snake Plissken and Mad Max crossover. Well, those are two badasses. I don't know who would win there. Uh, I like Kingsley. Ben Kingsley's Mandarin was fascinating. Um, in fact, it was so good that I only just thought of this, but, you know, they're almost definitely using him as the villain in the Shang-Chi movie, the Mandarin. And... It was established in one of those uh, Marvel short films that there was a real Mandarin out there and he was mad at, like, uh, Ben Kingsley's character for pretending to be him. But what if, like, they retroactively just said that, like, the real Mandarin also looks and talks like that and that, like, they were using, you know, like, makeup and stuff to really, like, make him look like the Mandarin. Like, in other words, maybe Ben Kingsley's portrayal could still be, like, a pretty cool one. Um, anyway, just an idea. The Marvel movies have had some good villains and some really forgettable ones. Let's see. They should do a Terminator where Skynet sends a Terminator back to the year 1776 to stop America from being created. Um, you know, I loved that Sarah Connor Chronicles TV show. I, I will say that, like, you know, there's Terminator 1 and Terminator 2, and I'd put Sarah Connor Chronicles right up there alongside it. Um, and then all the other movies, I'm like, don't really care about them. Um, I like the idea of Terminator a lot. Sarah Connor Chronicles had an episode where a Terminator went back in time to something like the 1930s to kill an architect. And then, like, he had nothing to do, so he just, like, waited, what was it, like, you know, 70 years to then go after Sarah Connor and uh, uh, 
John Connor. It was interesting. Mandarin is Shang Chi's father, replacing Fu Manchu. Yes, I think that that would that that's where they're going, Mandela. I think that would be a good idea. Mandarin was definitely less of a yellow panic character in the comics. I mean, initially a little bit of that, but his powers instead of just sort of being like you know an evil uh, generic like evil guy full of like evil generic uh, Asian henchmen, you know, he he got his powers from like alien rings and uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier? Yeah, I'll be watching that. I'm definitely getting the Disney Plus channel, and it's to watch those Marvel shows. I, I'm definitely curious uh, about them. I hope they're good. You guys are fun to talk to. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining me tonight. Much appreciated. What was the true nature of the Cameron Terminator? I guess I don't quite understand the question. The true nature? Uh, the first one was a horror movie about like just an unstoppable machine. Second one was an action movie. We should do a comic where global nuclear war happens and Superman wasn't able to stop it, but he has to help rebuild the Earth. Maybe, maybe take Superman out there and just put in your own created superhero, and now, Jeff, you have your own original story. I recommend, if you like that idea and you just came up with it, write that. It doesn't have to be Superman. It could just be, like, you know, some other superhero. What if it's a superhero that's not as powerful as Superman, but he was somehow able to survive this and, and like you know people really rely on him I don't know could go a lot of different ways like that Iron Man's villains go to other superheroes like Madame Mask and Agent Carter uh yeah but you know they were only going to make so many uh Iron Man movies so I think that like using some of their more well developed villains for other superheroes makes sense you know I wouldn't say that, like, Black Widow ever really had a uh, huge arch nemesis for most of her existence, and the idea of inserting somebody like Taskmaster or uh, Yelena Bolova as the, you know, next uh, Black Widow, that, that kind of makes sense to me. Is Mysterio really dead? That's an interesting question. Um, at first, I definitely thought he was, because, of course, it seems like that. But then again, I was like, well, he is sort of a master of illusion and everything, and um, there's every chance that he's somehow survived and faked all this. Who knows? I never watched Dark Angel. Sorry. Um, aware of it, uh, but uh, just hadn't watched that one. But I know James Cameron sort of produced it and came up with the idea and all. Uh, Gave a start to uh, plenty of young actors that are still, like, working today. Actually, now that I think of it, though, what was the star of that? Jessica something or other? And I can't think of what she's been in. Jessica Alba. Last thing I feel like I saw her in was something like Machete 2. What happened to her? If they're doing Sinister Six, you doubt that he's dead. Yeah, I don't know. You know... I don't think that they're going to do Sinister Six um, for the next movie. I think that they're going to keep holding off on that. Um, I'm leaning towards thinking that Kraven was is the villain that maybe makes the most sense uh, for the next movie. Um... His identity seems to be out there, and it, it could inspire a hunter. Uh, things could, like, you know... I, I think that, like, Craven, it, it would, would be a really good idea. And just focus on just one villain again. And then, if Marvel and Sony renew their partnership to make more Spider-Man movies in the MCU, 
then go ahead and, and, and go towards the uh, Sinister Six because, you know, Doc Ock is a great, great villain. I think he's my favorite villain. So you, you've got to have Doc Ock put it together. You've got to. And then, like, you've got, um, of what's left, you've got, like, Vulture and Scorpion, potentially Shocker, uh, you know, Craven maybe if he's been used, and then Mysterio, or just insert somebody else, like Sandman. I don't know. Everybody's talking about how hot Jessica Alba is. I'll just shut up. Uh, I haven't read the um, Old Man Logan series, sorry. I haven't read that. If Mysterio is still alive, then Spider-Man shouldn't be wanted for murder. Well, what if he's faking his death, just to you know, ruin Spider-Man's. Who knows? I agree, Connor. I, I'm personally also a big fan of, um, what do you call it, um, S Superior Spider-Man. I really like that. That worked for me in a big way. Mysterio and Loki had an illusion contest. I think you got to give it to the god between those two, but uh, I, I would definitely love to see the results. <laughs> That's a cool idea. Yeah, I think it's pretty amazing that uh, Marvel has been able to keep some of these actors around as long as they have, you know? Uh, Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Samuel L. Jackson stayed way past their contracts. Um, Chris Hemsworth signed up for another go around, and now we've got all these, uh, you know, Disney Plus shows. Like, you know, Tom Hiddleston has been used well more than I think anyone might have expected Loki to be used. But that's because he probably, I think Loki was probably the best overall villain in the uh, movies. Thanos is pretty interesting, obviously, because they gave him some room to stretch. Uh, stretch, and then in terms of TV, uh, Kingpin was fantastic. King Kingpin was great. Kingpin should probably, honestly, be brought into the Spider-Man movies. Like, even if he's not the main villain, like that, I would love to see Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin in a Spider-Man movie. That would be awesome. I think he's great. That's me. You wish Robert Downey Jr. had done another Iron Man film. I can understand that. Um, you know, I think that we'll still get to see him a little bit here and there. Uh, I think that he'll probably show up in a What If. I could see that uh, being like a, a movie ser series that they make several of. Uh, I just hope that they don't cheap out on the animation. That's uh, Otherwise, no one will be interested. So, it's a great premise. They've got the cast. Just don't cheap out on that animation.
that's cool to hear that like Vincent D'Onofrio likes that part so well Killmonger is, is the best Killmonger was a great villain he was it's just that initially they really had some pretty dull ones um, you know Malekith the Dark Elf was severely wasted um, Vulture was a great villain Vulture was a great villain but like you know Ironmonger was boring Whiplash was pretty boring you know, it didn't ruin the movies at all, but they were not awesome villains. Um, I don't know. They, 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 starting out, like, you know, through phase one, most of the villains weren't great, and we're just lucky that they hired really good actors to portray them, because that counted for a lot. Yeah, they wasted Christopher Eccleston. I, I, if I was him, I would be so pissed, because, uh, Malekith is a great villain in the comics. Maybe not great, but very good. Great might be overstating it, but like, and Christopher Eccleston is a, I will say, a great actor. Yeah, I, I totally would stick with that. Um, and he just did nothing in Thor 2. But that was one of the problems of Thor 2. Not their best movie. Willem Dafoe should come back as Green Goblin. He was great. He's probably a little kind of too old for the role to really work properly, in my opinion. Um, but he was great. He really was. Now, that's an interesting opinion, Clay. I actually liked Iron Man 3 quite a bit, but you know, some people I know didn't. How long have I been drawing? Eh, Forever, but I haven't really taken it that seriously until, like, you know, I, somewhere in my 20s, I started uh, trying to do a better job. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've never really tried to be a professional. Or, or I've had some comics published, but I've never really tried to... Um, you know, work at Marvel or DC or anything. I not quite there. Never quite got that good. But it is fun. I do enjoy it a lot. And uh, I enjoy chatting with all of you. Oh, William, thanks. Let's see. Okay. Whiplash was weak, but I'll fight on the hill for Iron Man 2. The pagoda scene? One of the greatest early visuals for the MCU. Yeah, Tony Stark on the Pagoda is great. Um, Iron Man 2, the problem with Iron Man 2 for me is it was trying to do too much groundwork for the upcoming Avengers. You know, they, they, they it, it wasn't like Black Widow was bad. It wasn't like Whiplash or Justin Hammer was bad. It was just too much was going on. There was just too much going on. Iron Man 3 felt like a Lethal Weapon 3 rehash? Uh, I mean, you knew it was a Shane, uh, Shane Black film, but I don't know. They should bring back Justin Hammer. Well, they did in that short film about um, the Mandarin in prison, because Justin Hammer was in there, there too. And they've definitely mentioned Hammer in a few other movies, but... Uh, uh, and TV shows, now that I think of it. But yeah, they, they should bring back uh, Justin Hammer. He could be a lot of fun still. Ah, oh, thanks, Grayson. Glad you enjoyed the Black Hammer episode. Any thoughts on Roach Mill? Um, haven't read Roach Mill. I'm aware of it, but I haven't read it. So I'll have to think of that. Hammer could build the tech for the Sinister Six? Yeah, maybe, but honestly, so could um, Vulture's crew, right? I mean, he's got the Tinker, so... I'm just saying you've already got some established elements. Could be either. I'm gonna make a fan art of you watching the Loki Mysterio Illusion Contest. You should, Layla. I would, I would love to see uh, your take on that idea. That sounds fun. What was I doing with some of these lines? It's hard to remember.
What do you think of the boys? Um, I wasn't too big a fan of the uh, comic. I gave up somewhere around issue 20, um, but I really like the TV show. I think that they made some big improvements. Um, I'm saving some of my opinions in case I do an episode sort of discussing that or comparing the two. I wish I could do uh, more episodes and do them faster, but uh, it's really hard to even get one out these days. Uh, you know, I've got a full-time job that definitely ma makes me put in more than, not makes me, but I, ha I, I do have to in order to do well, like put in more than 40 hours. So, um... You know, it's hard. My time is, is definitely stretched. Um, I'm currently moving into my new house. I mean, that'll be done by this month, but it's been a really tough month to um, get my episodes done to the standard that I want to. And I'm not even sure that I have, but it's been a really tough month. Whatever happened to the Mega City 1 TV show? As far as I know, it's still in development. Um, obviously... Uh, they're not going to get Carl Urban for it now, but who knows. <laughs> yeah, I think, why, why bring Adam Sandler into the DCEU, Jeff? I think that we need a, an Adam Sandler extended universe. I think we need the ASEU. I've seen the early 90s Swamp Thing series, uh, and I've seen the movies. That first movie was directed by Wes Craven. I would have thought it would be so much better, but I think it's just kind of cheap. There are a couple good things about the first Swamp Thing movie, but mostly it's just like, I like seeing Ray Wise, I liked Adrian Barbeau. There's one or two stunts that are good, but mostly that movie is painful. It's so boring and the suit is terrible. Anyway. No reason to get too mean. I just realized that, like, um, and I didn't intend this, I'll, if I extended this page into, like, you know, several pages, um, it really does need an establishing shot page so that you can see the characters' faces, so that you can understand their environment, etc. Um, definitely wasn't trying to skimp on that, but it, it definitely, like, needs that to make this page work properly. I was just trying to have fun though tonight. Crispin Glover is the Joker. That's an interesting idea, Masato. That's a really interesting idea. Jim Carrey is Plastic Man? Sure. Maybe a little old, but he could still do a good job. Sure. Sterling K. Brown is Two-Face? I'd be down with that. Sterling K. Brown's a good actor. He's got, like, a proper amount of sort of gravitas and stuff. He could definitely play a villain, but, uh... I don't know. I'm, I'm... I was about to say I'm surprised he hasn't been in a superhero movie yet, and then I just remembered that he was. He was uh, Killmonger's father in uh, Black Panther. Took me a minute to, to realize that. Oh, thanks for the birthday wish, Ethan. I really appreciate it. Yeah, this is, this is sort of my birthday present to myself. Sonic the Hedgehog from the new movie as the Joker. Ah, the Beowulf. You, you might have had the line of the night. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> He's pretty creepy, that, that initial version of Sonic that they tried to give us. That, uh, ooh. Nobody really liked that.
that said, I've never... I can't think of, like, another movie where they were just like, yo, this is so bad, and the fan reaction is so bad that we're going back to the drawing board to, like, redo it. Like, what other movie did they just... Did the studio, like, deliver a trailer and then just bail completely on? I'm, I'm really not sure. I, I can think of one... I can think of plenty of movies that got delayed, but, like, one where they just were like, oh, crap, like, we didn't do it right at all. I don't know. It's hard to think of one. Do you think Keanu Reeves would make a good Moon Knight? Maybe. The only issue I keep coming up with is that some of these actors are like, um, maybe too old. And I think what's happened is, um, and, and by the way, I think that this was commented on in Tarantino's new movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. There have been different eras in, in Hollywood. And the end of the 60s was the end of the golden age of Hollywood when studios you know, were, were, were king, and they would just sign people, uh, actors, to contracts who would be their star. And after that, it was like the age of the uh, blockbusters, which is like sort of extended into today. And at this point, somewhere around the time basically like Marvel started, it became less about bankable stars. You know, Brad Pitt and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio are in real life actors that like no matter what movie they make a lot of people will go to see them but they're getting older and there's not necessarily a new generation of a-list actors there are people that have been very successful in movies but you know like when marvel's hired people like robert downey jr was not a huge uh, star uh, at the time that he was hired in Iron Man. Now, he's a respected actor, but he'd had a lot of problems. His star had fallen, and he built himself back up. Uh, uh, you know, guys like uh, uh, Chris Pratt, like, you know, he wasn't even the star of the sitcom that he was on when they hired him for Guardians of the Galaxy. And now these guys are lead actors, but I do also don't think that they necessarily, like, I don't think Chris Pratt can just make a movie and people will show up. Not in the same way that, like, in the past we've had, like, you know, movie stars that can put butts in seats. Now it's more about a produced, you know, like, uh, a film. The days of, like, you know, Tom Cruise is still a star, but when he reaches a certain age, you know, we're not going to have, like, we don't have the next Tom Cruise. We don't have the next Matt Damon or whatever. There are actors that we like, that we like seeing in, in like at least the big action movies, but they're not going to do like, you know, a quiet drama that like still can like put enough seat, uh, asses in seats. It, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. It, 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 we're, we're entering a new era of Hollywood, in my opinion. We probably did five to ten years ago. Somewhere around there, things are changing. Um, so anyway, just... Uh, just putting that out there that, like, um, people are suggesting dream casting for a lot of Mar Marvel movies. And what's funny is when you really look at it, like, the stars are sort of guys that were, like, um, that, that are, you know, in their, you know, late 40s to 50s at this point. And, you know, superheroes are generally thought of as in their, like, mid-20s to throughout their 30s. So, yeah, he is. Tom Cruise is famous. What I'm saying is that the days of, like, finding the next new Tom Cruise, I don't think we have that. I, I, I don't. Anyway, it's, um, it's just an idea, but I really don't think we have the same level of A-list movie stars that, that can, like, bring people to see whatever they make. Now people like way more, they like, you know, sequels, remakes, uh, digital movies, like digital action movies and stuff like that. You say Will Smith can still open a movie, and I say, 
Sort of. Um, you know, his last couple movies did not do that great. Things like Titan AE, he couldn't he couldn't make that open well. He didn't. Uh, Gemini Man, I like Ang Lee, but those trailers uh, are just sort of like they they do not connect with me. And I can accept a certain amount of like um, digital stuff when I see my superhero movies, and I and I'm in that world. But when I see just an action movie that's not a superhero movie, I don't want to see lots of digital stunt work. So, like, Tom Cruise is still doing real stunts in Mission Impossible, and it shows, and it looks good. The last Mission Impossible was a great action movie. I went and saw um, Hobbs and Shaw. It's goofy fun, but it is a cartoon. There is so much digital stuff going on there that you're never really invested in the characters on an emotional level. You don't really think that they're at a place where they're really going to get injured or they're going to lose. I don't know. What can rectify the situation? It's not that it needs a fix. It, I'm not saying that anything is broken. I'm just saying that we're entering a new era. Yeah, John Wick movies barely have any CGI. And I like that. I like that a lot um, for, an action, for, for just action movies. Um, I think that it should still rely on um, less CGI stuff. I'm okay with most of it for superhero movies because I want to see fantastic worlds and stuff like that. In other words, I expect it in some of my sci-fi, but not in like my dramas or my action movies. It's not what I want. But who knows? I'm probably going to uh, call it a night here in just a little bit, folks. Um, I think I, I mentioned earlier to anyone who's been staying here for a, a while, it is really, really hot. Um, and I am just, uh, I'm boiling. Uh, I've been having a blast talking to everybody, but I'm, I'm pretty uncomfortable right now. Um, I think I need to just sort of call it. Um, I don't think I can, like, quite ink everything on this page. But, um... The Kingsman has that edge of reality kind of fight scenes. I think that the first Kingsman had pretty good fight scenes. And in the second one, I do think that um, Matthew Vaughn was pushing it a little too far in, in, in trying to keep that like all one shot type of uh, atmosphere. And it looked a little f more fake to me. Uh, it wasn't bad, but it, I like the first one more. China box office is the only thing that'll help Hobbs and Shaw. Did it not open well? I, I, I had fun, but uh, I didn't know if it did well or not. Oh, let's see. William says, Mr. Tropes, as always, it's a pleasure. Happy birthday and have a good one. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's so nice of you. Um, I, I plan to have a good one. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's going to be a nice, relaxing, fun day tomorrow. And then back to work, back to the move, uh, back to comic tropes. But um, actually, I'll probably work a bunch of comic tropes tomorrow, even though it's my birthday. But that's okay. Oh, thanks. Um, I don't know if it was great inking, but, you know, all I was really trying to do was, like, get get the bodies uh, out and, like, sort of show the, the sense of action. So just sort of having fun for myself, doing an action scene. But uh, it was a blast uh, talking to everybody t today. Thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. I, I, um, I sincerely appreciate it, guys. I'm going to take off now, but um, don't worry. You know, you'll see me on Comic Tropes. That will be coming out. And then as soon as I'm done with my move, um, it might just be like about two weeks or so before I'm really set up to do another live stream. But I do enjoy doing these with you folks. Um, and so I'm going to be set up as soon as possible. And remember, somebody asked me to show uh, Batman blowing out a cake. So uh, there's Batman blowing that cake everywhere <laughs> um you guys were awesome uh i don't think i have anything else to say other than uh oh yeah i've got a catchphrase keep reading comics see y'all later bye